Hi, Callie. My name is Hannah Shumsky. I am a senior secondary English education major and communication minor from the Beaver County area. And this is my project called Adjusting Focus that I conducted last fall as part of a practicum teaching writing course. And this was conducted with Dr. Timothy Oldekowski, the professor of that course in the Department of English. So just some background on why I chose this exact topic of video production and writing production. I want to go into English communication and journalism education after graduating in the spring. A lot of my research right now in my experience in the classroom has been student media, student law, student rights. So this fits where my sub interests of English are. And I just wanted to know more about how video production can enhance writing instruction or vice versa. So just some background on what video production looks like in classrooms from the fall 2019 semester when I conducted this project. These, two, these new technologies that are being incorporated into classrooms, Nearpod, Crash Course, YouTube, Kahoot, they're all visual based. So whenever there's a heavy reliance on visuals and being able to pick out symbols and colors and how these all connect. So for example, the skills that are often used in video production and writing analysis, we're already using in the classroom in literary analysis. So Lund brings us to a great point by saying skills such as planning, organizing, producing, polishing, evaluating, reading, writing, speaking, listening, and engaging in group dynamics, aesthetic judgment, and media literacy are all both in film analysis, video production, and literary analysis already. And in terms of the process of writing and video production, they all have their own defined stages. Uh, Murray explains that writing is pre-writing, where most of, the, most of the time is spent, writing and rewriting, and you can jump around to those stages as often as you want. So you know you might be rewriting, you might need to go back and do some research in the pre-writing stage. However, with video production, the stages are writing the script, developing a storyboard, locating your visuals, creating the story, and then publishing. And then oftentimes production courses work in maker spaces or shared word space. So a student newspaper, for example, which we'll talk more about in a few moments here. They must work together in order to come up with their final product. So that is an example of storytelling in maker spaces. And ultimately, as students are learning what elements of a story to include in what order, they are engaging in higher level thinking because they're thinking of how they're wanting to present that to the audience, almost metacognitively. And as a result of that, they are better producers of producers of media and content, and they become better evaluators of the media that they already consume daily. And as for this actual study, I interviewed four teachers in the Western Pennsylvania research region about how they incorporate writing and video, to what extent, and if they incorporate more than one or the other. So the ultimate question I came, wanted to answer to is, is there a defense for video production in place of or in supplement to writing instruction? So just as an overview of the schools that I studied, environment one was a typical English literature classroom and a school with 1400 students in grades nine to 12. And in this school, the teacher mostly emphasized reading and writing assignments. So journals and responses to articles presented in class were a major source of writing assignments. Larger research papers were also included in the research process, allowing some media literacy enabling because of that. And there was also a film boot camp in his science fiction class that he incorporated. And he says to that, if you watch any movie, a movie is going to succeed or fail based on the writing. So even in that, they are trying to think of how writing, how production and pre-production works to impact the final story's message. Environment two has two schools. The first one was over 1600 students in grades 10 to 12. And this was primarily a journalism and a television teacher. 
Some classes, class assignments include silent movie projects and commercials, and for those two in particular, writing was required through treatments, scripts, and storyboards, all of which had to be done even before thinking about touching a camera as well. So just seeing again, pre-production and almost time back to Murray's point on pre-writing are all important before we even think about production in the final product. And there's also news package and documentaries in which the interview process and interviewing before even writing the story is extremely important. And another part of this is a different style of writing too. So for writing for broadcast is definitely different than writing for an essay or writing an English class because you're trying to be concise and say your point in so few words. So to that, this teacher said, to be a more effective, quick communicator, maybe would be a benefit that would come out of this too. And to the Nets Environment 2 classroom, this is a smaller school, about an hour south of the other school environment two, with 500 students in grades nine through 12. And there are two classes this teacher primarily sees in regards to relevance to this project. Print media workshop students are responsible for the newspaper and the yearbook. And in newspapers specifically, they have to write pitches, conduct interviews, and undergo a five-stage editing process with their peers. So again, tie back to the makerspace, being able to work with other people in order to make meaning and think visually how to place stories, how to make graphics to best convey their point. And Broadcast Media Workshop is responsible for the daily announcements and additional featured videos. And writing does, is involved in those feature videos especially, but this teacher did emphasize this was an uphill battle with a fighting battle actually with other students to be able to see which groups took the time to map their story out and think ahead in regard to voiceover work, interview questions, and other things like that. So again, another example, pre-production and writing within video production. And finally, we have a media arts classroom, a visual, visually based classroom through technology and video production in a school with nearly 1800 students in grades nine through 12. So for this, the students, uh, the teacher, excuse me, emphasizes the Center for Media Literacy's five core concepts of media literacy. If you want to read those, it is the QR code down below. And most of these projects are based on media messages, unique lessons, unique languages, commercial communication, and the writing is often seen in the storyboards and the reflections. So again, writing and pre-production. So what can we take from all of these? So in all four classrooms, writing and video production were present to at least some extent. So we saw the most writing in environment one and the least formal writing in environment three, and the reverse for video production, the most in video arts, the least in environment one. So in cases of the video production, you need some sort of writing production in that in order to have a successful product. Again, pre-production, we must have it there. In a sense, it is, it's a disguised type of writing. So for any reluctant writers, students who struggle with reading, possibly for um, an IEP, or um, just being a reluctant writer or a reader, that could benefit them to have some other sort of modality to play with in order to express their thoughts and gain an analysis. And however, while writing can exist without any additional modalities, there are opportunities with video production and writing production to expose students to the media they already consume daily. For example, TikTok, giving a exit ticket assignment or a overnight class project to make a TikTok about a quote in text is a great way to incorporate video production and highly relevant, especially post COVID. Um, and then, we also must make sure that we are equating media literacy with literary analysis, especially as we are becoming more and more internet technology media dependent and students turn to these types of media for entertainment, expression, we must be able to show that there's equal merit between these types of analysis in different modalities. And I also wanted to reference the ISTE standards, the International Society for Technology Education in Education, especially the areas of active digital citizens, effective communicators, and empathetic storytellers, as those are all effective outcomes of instructional technology and being able to incorporate different modalities into the classroom. 
And just to briefly conclude, there was, this was conducted before the pandemic. So I hope that myself or someone else is able to carry on this research to see how this was affected. And other areas of research could include students' thoughts on writing and video production, a larger analysis of classrooms, and accessibility for students with disabilities, and the impact of the digital divide. And I would like to thank you all for your time. If you have any other questions or want to know more about my research, you can email me at the address on screen or otherwise. Thank you again for this opportunity and I wish you all the best for the end of the semester.